You're listening to Innovation at Zoetis. With us today is Dr. Sue Denise. She's Executive Director of Genetics Research, and we're talking about genetic testing, which is making it possible for farmers to identify genomic traits in cattle and sheep that are associated with productivity and resilience to disease. Dr. Denise, let, let's start with the basics of animal genetics. What do we need to know? Well, Zoetis offers genetic products for dairy and beef producers around the world and sheep products for New Zealand. An animal owner collects a tissue sample from an animal, like an earplug, blood sample, or tail hairs shortly after a calf or lamb is born, but at a time that would be convenient to the owner. These samples are sent to our laboratory where we can perform a genetic analysis. We look at tens of thousands of points in the DNA of that animal and report a genotype to our analytics pipeline. This pipeline is very specific to the segment of the industry. Dairies want high quality usable milk for their customers. Ranches want animals to produce the finest steaks. But to get those ultimate results, a number of events must happen, as everyone would believe. The animal has to be healthy, it needs to have good genes for the product, but it also must be able to reproduce, and it must be an efficient converter of the feed to product. So the animal owner needs to understand genetic capability for all the performance and health characteristics of their animals. The producer can then make decisions on what they will do with that animal. Will that animal be at the top of the herd genetically, and would they like that animal to produce the next generation for the future of the operation? These tests have been used by our customers to dramatically change the health and performance of their herd by replacing less capable animals with the next generation to create a herd of high-performing, healthy animals. So you've been quoted as saying, sequencing a genome is the most important step toward fully understanding it. And you've been, you've had good success lately. You and your team announced exciting news earlier this month. Um, You've developed the first complete reference genome for Angus breed cattle, and this comes on on the heels of developing the first reference genome for Holstein cattle. So tell us more about these firsts and and why they matter. Well, Eleanor, let me um, bring you back to where we are today. This animal genomic space is rapidly developing. Only 10 years ago, we had the first public draft of the bovine genome. That is having a map of the order of the A, G, C's, and T's that make up DNA in cattle. It was a tremendous achievement from a huge public effort of scientists all over the world because ordering all three billion bases of the genome without a blueprint to start with is a huge task. You start with these short pieces of DNA and find where all of the pieces overlap. It's like completing a huge jigsaw puzzle without a picture to look at. The public effort sequenced an inbred Hereford cow because they wanted to have as much uniformity as possible across those genes that have been inherited from both the sire and the dam. Of course, this animal then was not considered a modern production animal, and it also had two X chromosomes. So we were missing the male Y chromosome. We're learning that genomes are constantly evolving, mutating, and changing. The genome is robust, yet we can clearly see differences in the kind of cattle produced all over the world. We want to understand the differences and similarities to discover new ways to keep animals healthy and productive for our customers wherever they care for their animals. We at Zoetis are interested in leading innovation, and we decided to complement this public map with our own sequence from animals that are used in the industry today. First, we sequenced a Holstein bull with substantial impact on today's dairy industry, and then followed it with an Angus bull that's produced many progeny in the Angus breed. We used three different sequencing technologies, each with a unique advantage, to create an end-to-end sequence of the 29 autosomes, that's the regular chromosomes, and the X and Y sex-determining chromosomes. 
A complete genome consists of more than 3 billion bases in cattle. And using these technologies, we completed the equivalent of sequencing the entire 3 billion bases 380 times, making sure that we had the depth of coverage to make the new map and also to provide for any proofreading that needed to be done. So from all that work, what, what new prediction tools um, have, uh, from Zoetis have resulted from, from this work? We're using that first reference genome to better understand fertility and health of dairy cows. We created Clarified Plus to predict susceptibility to respiratory disease, diarrhea, and early mortality in young dairy calves. And as she becomes a mature lactating cow, we'd like also have created products that will tell us about incidents of mastitis, metritis, and other health insults. In a field trial on over 3,000 heifers published in the Journal of Dairy Science in 2016, we were able to show that the top 25% in predicted disease resistance so that is the prediction that we came up with at Zoetis, had half the incidence of disease in their first lactation than the worst 25% that we predicted for the traits evaluated. We'll use the reference genome to explore the basis of resistance and learn whether we can provide additional treatments and vaccines to further reduce disease. In the future, we hope to create a complete set of tools for our customer that can be used for prediction, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment to make a disease a minor incident in their day-to-day -day care of animals. You're making what was seemed like years ago impossible, possible, amazing work. So in the area of Angus, what new genetic testing capabilities might be in the future? We've just begun our exploration of the Angus genome, but we have expectations of using it as a backbone to understand the traits important in beef animals. We've already sequenced a number of animals of different breeds, but many times less completely than the reference in Angus. And now we can map those sequences to the Angus reference to learn about the differences among breeds. Genetic differences can lead us to hypotheses and insights about the underlying genomics so that we can create differences in traits that our customers are interested in improving. Since we've just started our exploration, we've already found 25,000 differences between Holstein, Angus, and Hereford. If we had only one reference genome, those variants would have been completely missed. Do you envision that genetic tests will take an increasingly important role in animal agriculture? Well, Eleanor, I'm pretty biased, but I do think genetics will take an increasingly important role because it provides a predictor into the future. Even hard to predict traits like disease resistance have become manageable in ways we could only have imagined 10 years ago. We'll learn more about the role of epigenetics, multiple copies of genes, and the impact of non-protein coding genes and use that information to build the prediction tools of the future. Genomes are constantly changing with mutations, insertions, deletions, and repetitive regions. Only about 1.5% of the genome actually contains instructions for making proteins. We understand very little of that remaining 98.5%, but we know it's important. We've already started to explore some of those differences in our reference genomes. We envision a day that we can use differences among animals to predict outcomes, develop new vaccines and medicines, and create diagnostic tools that will become the backbone of future health and productivity of animals. Thank you, Dr. Denise. We've been talking about the work of Zoetis scientists in animal genetics to help build healthier, more productive herds and flocks. If you'd like more information, visit www.zoetis.com. I'm Eleanor White, reporting for Innovation at Zoetis.